Okay. Got it. Okay, uh, Ambassador Terry, it's uh, it's nice having you here once more. Uh, this is I May Reach Foundation, and uh, we are very pleased to host you for uh, one of our series, uh, the podcast series, where we handle a number of issues that touches on you know the life of human beings, you know the challenges that uh, humankind faces. And uh, for this very special uh, edition here, we are talking about men and the masculinity that is around men and how it is defined. So uh, for another time, I have to say uh, it's a pleasure to have you here and uh, do this because we know that there's a lot that we expect from you uh, as a man who is, you know, aware of his environment, his mind, and everything around masculinity. So yes, Ambassador Terry, I'll give you this opportunity to tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, uh, your name, of course, and what you do. So it's all yours. Well, thank you, Andreas. Um, I'm quite honored that you asked me to be part of this. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, my title and my name is His Excellency Ambassador Terry Earthwind Nichols. I'll explain mm -hmm. Earthwind in a moment. And I am a United Nations Peace Ambassador at large. I am also an ambassador on behalf of refugees with the United Refugee Green Council of Cyprus. I'm in America, but I, I represent refugees globally. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a college educated man. Uh, oh, where to start? Seven, seven books I've authored. I'm working on my eighth book. Uh, I'm an international speaker, published author, uh, keynote. Um, uh, boy, where, where do you go? Um, I am a guest lecturer in a couple of uh, universities. Uh, my company uh, is global. We're in 17 countries right now, 27 U.S. states. And uh, we do business in uh, six languages now, which is kind of exciting. We started uh, nine years ago uh, as a mom and pop operation. My wife and I as business partners. And we've expanded into four divisions. And uh, uh, we've We've spread across the world and we just uh, are very excited about it. Another part of me, I was born and raised here in the, in the United States. Uh, I was raised to believe uh, that uh, basically I was a fourth generation Irish American, where it uh, turns out um, I'm a lot older generation in America than that. Earthwind is my tribal name. I'm Chickamauga Cherokee, Native American. And that uh, secret was kept from me until I was an adult. So yeah. um, uh, the elders of the tribe, that uh, my tribe, Chickamauga, uh, know that I travel the world on behalf of world peace and, and the environment. And they gave me the name Earthwind, which in my language is Gado Onule, which is his breath across the earth. So His breath uh, across the earth. Yes, his breath across the earth. Is that beautiful or what? And yeah. uh, so uh, my, I've always been a big peace ambassador. Uh, and now that I'm uh, an elder with uh, my, my tribe and things, I know why that, that's such a piece of my heart. So that's a, a quick uh, walkthrough of, of me right now. Wow. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very... I'm very pleased, uh, I can say surprised even, <laughs> at how you define yourself from, you know, the names you acquire from uh, the people according to the work that you do and uh, how you are an all-round guy. You've done books, you know, you're doing business and, and it, it, it's a whole lot of things that we can appreciate. As you know, the upcoming men, you know, we, we haven't reached the age where you are, and therefore uh, we can learn from, you know, people like you. 
So uh, I, I will go to it very quickly because um, our core business today, we want to talk about men and we, can't, we want to talk about the mental health in men and how it has affected them. So um, we have so many articles, of course, that talks about uh, men and the mental health. So uh, according to you, you know, you are someone who's read, you're someone who's so much conversant with uh, many issues around men. What is your take on men's mental health? If, if somebody wants you to talk about men and their mental health, what do you think, you know, you, you can share? The first thing, uh, <clears throat> men are... Uh, receiving a lot of mixed messages now that mm -hmm. 150 years ago there wasn't. A man was a man, a hunter-gatherer, that was the man's job. He mm -hmm. ran, he got the food into the, onto the table, and his wife would run the children and run the house, and that's it, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you didn't get food that day, you didn't have food to eat, so it was a very high priority. Yeah. And now, uh, with modern times, uh, my cell phone's more uh, powerful than uh, the, the central computer I was uh, connected to in the Navy just before I retired late last century. I love saying that, 1990s. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, getting in touch and being present with mm -hmm. our masculine side and our and our female side, yeah, guys, mm -hmm. we we we've got both. Okay, is yeah, important. Yeah. And depending on the messages we're receiving regularly, mm -hmm. they can be mm -hmm. very mixed and and cause a lot of angst. And yeah. so, um, talking about it out loud, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, uh, I like talking in circles. I always have. Now I understand why. That's a big yeah. part of Native American life and indigenous mm -hmm. cultures is sitting yeah. around a circle and a fire or whatever and talking things through. All right. So returning mm -hmm. to those basic uh, precepts of connection to, to humanity is very mm -hmm. important. Even mm -hmm. though, you know, like on my screen right now, uh, there's more than one of us and, and uh, we're still a circle. OK, mm -hmm. we still put things in the middle and we talk them through. And today we're talking about them. So it's yeah. very important. Mm -hmm. Wow. So uh, I think uh, you, you've laid you've already laid the foundation for uh, for this this podcast because um, you've you've told us like uh, the, the man's psychology and the man's role in the society from the cradle. You know, so it, it really means a lot that uh, we understand that foundation and how it has moved from one generation to another. So uh, our next question, I, I, would, I, would, I would put it this way, that men are not said to be emotionally available and uh, somehow, or not even somehow, in most cases, they don't allow themselves to be emotionally vulnerable. So they cover it so that you know you 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 can't reach them. There are people who are in the house, but you know, physically present but emotionally absent, leading to so many children, so many men raised by other men who you know are not emotionally present in the lives of their kids. So uh, you come from a different generation. And uh, you know what what we are facing today might be slightly different from what your generation were. You know the definition of the father from your generation and the definition of the father in our generation, the 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 portrait of the father in your generation and the portrait of a father in our generation. So what what do you think? Um, uh, is the leading or, or, or this is the causative uh, uh, factor to this alienation of the father figure in the house compared to when you guys were growing up? Is there any comparison between the masculinity when you guys were growing up and the definition of masculinity today? 
masculinity, mm -hmm. I'm 68 years old. So yeah. my growing up was the 1950s and 60s. Mm -hmm. And in those days, uh, mm -hmm. a man was a man, machismo, the leader, the, the runner of the family, the, the person in charge, non-negotiable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they had to have that persona on the street. They had to run that energy 24-7. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, that caused a lot of problems in and of itself. Okay, communication mm -hmm. problems. You know, a man couldn't uh, just just sit down and with somebody and and talk about their problems, because then the man is weak, and weak is the worst. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whereas today, everyone in society, uh, certainly uh, you, Andres, and and your generation Z's and and G, uh, uh, are more attuned to the intercommunication between the the mother and father of a family for instance yeah. the leader mm -hmm. of the family now is more common than people think is a female a single mother a single parent in charge there mm -hmm. isn't an option to talk it through with anybody there's no one there okay uh and people in my generation were expected to have make 2.3 children somehow mm -hmm. okay and in this generation everybody's going to say well if you if you want children that's fine if you don't want children that's fine too we've got almost 8 billion people running around um the 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 context of of pressure on a man today a young man I would say under 40 is mm -hmm. huge because um, their expectations of who they are are so muddled, they don't know who they are, you know? Mm -hmm. And so they seek the guidance of others and they all of a sudden are receiving way too many messages. Now they can't figure anything out. Now they're confused. So who am I? You know, like in my business, uh, when I work with executives and different people, I mentor people as well. And I tell them presence is the point where manifestation becomes action. Be present with yourself. What happened yesterday is done. What's coming doesn't matter. Be yourself. Take care of yourself first. Once you have attained presence in the present moment, Whatever you're seeking will, will show itself. It'll manifest. And um, that gives a person not power. We're trying to get people to think of more of self-confidence than self-power. Power is a push word. Self-confidence is I take care of me first. And then I can, I can take care of my family. I can take care of my community. I can take care of the world. But if I don't have the love for myself and take care of me first, I can't give that because there's nothing there. So people who who uh, don't love themselves, for instance, or or, or respect themselves, um, try to give that love and respect out to other people, and it don't work. It doesn't sustain if it does work. So that is a major problem and a major shift in America and, and the world as a whole is the traditional values of self. Because mm -hmm. 150, 200 years ago, it didn't matter where you were in the world, it was self-preservation first. You had to take care of yourself or something was going to eat you or somebody was going to kill you or something like that. Yeah. So it's important to get back to self-preservation first. A great example of what I'm speaking of is if you're on an airplane and the oxygen masks come down, you put mm -hmm. yours on first. You take care of you, and then you can help a lot of people. But if you try to help other people, you'll pass out and you won't help you. So it's me first. It's not being selfish. Yeah. Somebody put that up somewhere 50, mm -hmm. 80 years ago. 
that mm -hmm. if you thought about yourself first, you were selfish. No, that's not true. Yeah. Okay. You, you, you must protect yourself first and then, you know, you can protect others. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Terry, I think, uh, that's something very insightful because, uh, so many men maybe think about uh, being there for their family, being there for other people, but they don't really take care of, you know, what is inside them before they reach out to other people. So it, it becomes it becomes a really, really serious issue on that. So, um, you know, you, you, you've said this, but I, I want you to like maybe help us in a nutshell how can we raise a community of men or a society with men who are emotionally aware of who they are and are equipped you know to be the men that we all desire to be despite the you know the the the, the innovations or the the new comings of the of the millennium i, I don't know if you get that you know what I tell a, a lot of, of young people, uh, especially young men, because they're yeah. very confused. Mm -hmm. And society ha openly supports uh, women right now. And there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. It's just yeah. the way it is, which makes it mm -hmm. more complicated for men. Mm -hmm. And so find a father, find a mentor, find mm -hmm. someone, uh, an elder, you know, society, indigenous society relies on the elders to teach the youth because mm -hmm. the parents are, are busy working, okay? And mm -hmm. when the youth grow up, it's their turn to go work. And when they get older, it's their turn to teach. Yeah. Elders, uh, old folks, ladies and gentlemen, they're listening to this. Mm -hmm. uh, the senior people have a lot of wisdom and a lot of years to, to talk about things that are of, that are of v value today just because they're not proficient at work and on, on a computer or a cell phone doesn't mean that they're foolish. They have a lot to give and they want to give it. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. disconnect is the biggest part of the breakdown in societal communications in mm -hmm. uh, probably three generations is the fact that we no longer pay attention and connect to the elders in our lives. Wow. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. The elders in my lives, when I was a young man, my, my father died when I was in school. Mm -hmm. And so my father figure was removed. My mother uh, moved on and married someone else. I, I went out, I joined the Navy uh, in the United States Navy and made a career out of it for 20 years. And different people who were older than I am did not fit the father figure, but they certainly felt uh, that they should mentor me because they all told me there was three or four in particular. Yeah. I, want to, I want you to stick close to me because I want to teach you. Your... Mm -hmm. You're someone special, and I want to make sure that, that you have the right skills in life. And I'm mm -hmm. so glad they did, because I was lost yeah. at that point. I had no doubt. So um, a, a quite a, a large num percentage of my mentees, my male mentees certainly, have no father. Mm -hmm. So I'm Papa Terry or dad or father or whatever, and I'm fine with that. I love it. Wow. I pick, I pick uh, a number of issues from your statement. The first one is that uh, the younger generation of men need to find a mentor, find somebody who has been through the maze of masculinity so that they can help you chat your way through it because the, the demands you know, of life that you needed in, when you are 19 is much more different from the demands of life that you need when you're 30. And it will be different from the demands of life that you will have to meet when you are 40 and so on and so forth. And another, another blessing is that I can attest that all people love talking. Uh, I have a grandmama who wants me to just listen to her stories over and over and over. And there's a lot into that. So uh, the, the say or the phrase that all is gold 
really it is gold because and uh, it, it's one goal that comes for free because elderly people just want to talk and they want to tell you about their experiences so that's something so powerful you said there that we need to find our own mentors we need to reach out to the elderly and try to you know get what it takes to be a man so that we can move from one point to another that's really really profound so uh ambassador terry um uh, research is proving something that is really really alarming that many young people in their attempt to cope up with societal uh, 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 societal expectations of being a man, uh, they fail at some point. And the moment they fail, the, the only thing that happens is now some of them are drowned in depression where they're using a number of things, you know, to cope up or to create a false world that is maybe safe for them for the moment. And a number of them, men in particular, are committing suicide. So I don't know what kind of awareness does the society need so that we can, we can, we can take care of our younger generation because we are losing a number of them and at a very alarming rate. If, if, if you look at the data that is provided by the World Health Organization on the reported suicides and people who are even in the, uh, in the facilities where they're trying to recover themselves mentally, you find less men in these facilities, but again, there are more men hanging on the rope. So what do you think uh, the society can do so that we avert this situation? Good point. Uh, one yeah. thing I wanted to add for the mentor part of it is when you go out and find somebody to mentor, you want mm -hmm. somebody who's there to support you, not tell you what to do. Yeah. That gives you no, that gives you no, no reason to move forward because mm -hmm. you're not learning. That's important yeah. to state. Mm -hmm. Now, suicide um, uh, is a big part of our business globally. Uh, mm -hmm. Suicide ideation is the number three uh, repetitive behavior that that we address globally, and yeah. um, the majority of of those uh, that come to us certainly in suicide mm -hmm. ideation, yeah, have lost um, have lost the ability to talk to somebody mm -hmm. that they trust. Yeah. OK, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, that's an individual thing. Mm -hmm. If if someone that as you're growing up, if you uh, talk to people who uh, you think you trust and they and mm -hmm. they they cannot be trusted, uh, yeah. you start to get scared to say anything to anyone. Mm -hmm. And. Um, you know, we're going back to to the perception of of strength, and uh, you know, a powerful man is not going to commit suicide. Uh, yeah. Weakling is failure, mm -hmm. loser, all those bad words. And they're bad words, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a society that that you success or fit, you either have succeed or or you have failure. Neither mm -hmm. is true. Either case is a learning situation. It has nothing to do. Failure is the number of times that a great leader or a successful entrepreneur or uh, great people have failed over and over and over again because they keep moving. They, they take that as a learning experience and move. Unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, young men out there uh, that that take failure as the loser thing because that's what they heard when they were children. Well, guess what, folks? Yeah. You're not children anymore. So mm -hmm. children don't know what they're saying. All right? Adults do. And there is no pass or fail. There's learn or learn. There is no loser. Okay? I lost my mm -hmm. keys. That don't make me a loser. It means they're misplaced. We'll find them. There is um, knowing that no matter what, tomorrow's coming. Mm -hmm. No matter what. 
and you start again. Okay. Yeah. Here's the yeah. thing that a lot of a, a lot of people who are very depressed forget to think about because mm -hmm. it's difficult to go there, and that is uh, when you're depressed, uh, you don't stop to think that what just happened uh, that depressed you uh, mm -hmm. was a sign of failure. It's not a sign of failure. It was a learning experience that you get to learn because somewhere down the road, should you decide mm -hmm. to stay with us, you're going to teach that experience to someone else. Wow. You're going to give of yourself to someone mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. And there's power in that. Now, I haven't talked in confirmed power, but it gives you confidence to, to know that all the things that I've gone through in my life and have mm -hmm. way too long for this program are, you know, if if you want to uh, uh, attach them to failure, I got a, a list that's very long. OK, I fail every day. I failed last you know, night. OK, I had a failure last night. If you want to go mm -hmm. there. It wasn't, it was a learning experience, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm excited about that, and here's why. Because at some point, maybe right here on this program, you folks listening to me, yeah, I'm gonna pass that learning experience from that failure yeah. last night onto you in my words today. Mm -hmm. And we're going to touch someone who didn't get touched before. And that's that's more important than anything is just take the next step. Take the next step. This will pass. Take the next step. And if it keeps happening over and over and over, it's going to happen over and over and over. Something at some point is going to mm -hmm. click in your head and you're going to go, no more of this. Wow. No wow. more. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And um the words in my voice mm -hmm. are calling to you just keep stepping mm -hmm. just keep moving if mm -hmm. you're in the bush and uh, you know uh you get in in uh, an ant hill or anything like that do you stand there and call yourself a failure no you run you get to water yeah. you get you move okay mm -hmm. life is no different life is no different just because there's no ants biting you there's other things happening to you that that are are more destructive than a few animals. Mm -hmm. Wow! Can you tell wow. I I was raised in the mountains? <laughs> mm -hmm. You once told eggs. us that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Ambassador Terry, this this is powerful because um, there's, there's there's a voice there, and you know it 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 consoling and at the same time is encouraging you know you need to keep up going and uh from the beginning you talked about you mentioned something about machismo you know it, it's like a toxic masculinity and uh, uh you know uh, as, as, a, as a student of literature once uh, i take this book uh by chino achebe uh things fall apart the character there of Congo was not ready for change because he was so much uh, inclined towards machismo, the toxic masculinity. And in the end, he had to commit suicide because he could not accept that things have changed or that he failed once and, you know, failure does not mean the end. So uh, if you've not read this book, I'm challenging you to go ahead and read it because it has a lot to teach about machismo and how toxic it can be. And, uh, you know, like T.P. Jack says, even the strongest man, you know, needs help. The, the strongest of all that we think are very strong, at some point they're also broken. So Ambassador Terry, I think we're just coming to an end. And uh, you know, you, you've you've told us that we need to reach out to mentors. We need to reach out to people. So, how is it possible to meet you or just to reach you as a person? You know, we are in a in a global village right now through the internet and all that. So technology has managed to make it easier for us. So you, as an individual, as a father, somebody who's gone through the mazes of masculinity. I know the first way we can connect with you is through your books, 
But now, how else? I tell people I am an open book and uh, I'm very researchable. So yeah. if you go to the internet and search Terry Earthwind Nichols, make sure you use Earthwind because there's about 20,000 Terry Nichols in North America. So if you Google or research Terry mm. Earthwind Nichols, there's one in the world. <laughs> all of my books, my websites, all of my social medias, uh, you know, I just enjoyed going over 51,000 uh, followers in, in, in LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, those, that's the important part, you know, as a, as a parting comment, I would also yeah. make sure that you understand something else. Again, mm -hmm. I'm 68 years old and guess what? I have a mentor. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, I mentor a lot of people and I have a mentor. Okay, we all need someone that we can trust and draw information on, and from that, uh, make better informed decisions for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you so much, Ambassador Terry. Uh, we are uh, unfortunately short of time right now because we have to edit here. I have to say that it's been really, really profound. Uh, your thoughts are very profound. And we are so glad again as Imerit Foundation reaching to you once more. So I would say goodbye from this point. Maybe you just have a parting shot and then we end it. Was that a Terry? Yes. <laughs> The parting shots, Ambassador Terry, we just have one minute and then we're going. Oh, I misunderstood you. I thought you needed the right. still. <laughs> okay. One quick thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Trust yourself. Yeah. You're not you you're not selfish. All right. Thank you. Trust yourself. Uh -huh. Yes. Be yourself first. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Ambassador Terry. And uh, may you have uh, a nice time. Thank you. I've enjoyed this and I'm very honored that you made me part of your program. Thank you so much. So bye-bye. Bye. All right.